Hi and welcome back. So yesterday I did an art challenge. Today I've been doing other things. Um, and I should probably have washed my hands. This is watercolor. I've been playing with watercolor before I decided to sit down and get this video on the move. Sorry for the flicker. I'll try and keep my hands up here so the white isn't so dominant. Um, I want to do this video because I want to talk about <laughs> good and not so good mixing uh, sets. Um, there's sometimes uh, I've been asked a couple of times what what I mean when I talk about good mixing colors and good mixing sets. And I actually have one here that is not. Because sometimes it's easier to explain the negatives. It's not like a super negative, it's just this is not a good mixing set. Because uh, I'll show you the limitations. A uh, year and some ago I bought this uh, Turner Acrylic Gouache set and I bought the 12 set of Japanese colors. Now before I go any further I want to say there's absolutely nothing wrong with this product. None at all. Um, I bought it because I am very intrigued by the colors and, uh, and about Japanese and Asian art a lot. And I thought the colors were really cool. Um, and I was on a massive shopping spree at uh, Jackson's. Um, and I didn't really look uh, at what colors I was getting. I thought, well, a 12 set, you can, you can show them. Um, a 12 set, that, that would be good. And I also bought, um, actually bought another Turner set. Um, they have kind of like a... A little, oops, starter set. I have to fix that up from the floor. A starter set just with regular colors. So I believe I got two tubes of white in there. These are more regular colors. So we got a good and a not so good mixing set to, to show. Um, so I got, uh, it's, it's, I'm not lost. I, I got lots of paints. I decided to get two sets. Um, and what is in here is there is a white and it's called Japanese white and I really can't tell this from a regular white. It's I believe it's a titanium white. Uh, PW6. Yes, titanium white. Um, there's nothing there. Then there's this yellow and it's called Japanese pale yellow. And it's again titanium white, PY3, which is a Hansa yellow, and a PY42 that I don't remember what is. Then there's this red, and it's called Japanese yellow red. And there is a PR254 and PR101. The first one I'm not sure about. The second one is, is actually an... Um, iron oxide and these Japanese colors they should be inspired by apparently original Japanese uh, pigments uh, but these are all mixed pigments then there's a Japanese deep red and it's again a mixed thing PR14 and PR122 then there is a Japanese deep pink and then again there's white and there's again that uh, iron oxide PR101 and PR14. So two reds and a white. Or, uh, Javanesque red brown PW6, again titanium white, again PR101 uh, and a PR254. Uh, I'm not good with the red pigments, but I'm sure about that 101. That is. Uh, and then there's this beautiful mint green, and it is made again, titanium white, PY42 and PG7. PG7, I know what it is, that is phthalo green. And here is a beige, Japanese beige, beige. and I can't barely see what is in there. There's a white, and then there's PY42, which is yellow ochre, and again PR101, which is that synthetic uh, iron oxide 
um, PBR7, which is, it can be a number of colors, it can be sienna burnt or uh, raw, or it can be umber burnt or raw. Uh, and then there's this yellow green, also Japanese PY42, that is uh, again uh, yellow ochre. PY seventy four, no idea. And P B fifteen. So there's the Thaler blue in here too. Um, P do and pale blue. Again white. Uh, that's interesting. There's a uh, yellow ochre in here too, and then Thaler blue. That's an interesting mix actually. And Japanese. Dark blue, PB29. Um, as far as I remember, that is um, Prussian blue, PB15. That's thalo blue, PG7, thalo green, and PY3, which is a Hansa yellow. And um, black blue, PB15, PBK7. Uh, I don't remember. I think PBK seven is uh, is maybe. I gotta look that one up. And actually, no, I got it. In my notebook. I think somewhere I wrote down the blacks. Here, there, yeah, that's greens, browns, reddish browns, and black. PBK7, uh, carbon black, so it's a lamp black. Um, yeah, and some hands are yellow. So it's all mixed pigments, and that doesn't necessarily uh, make it a poor mixing set. So there's no orange in here, but there's four reds and one yellow and this yellow contains white which is kind of a little bit peculiar in itself um, so let's try and make an orange I'll take the paints himself is, is, is fine and they they are acrylic washes uh, which is basically just a matte uh, acrylic. It, it ends up looking like gouache, but it feels more like painting with um, with acrylic, a soft body or something. So yeah. Okay. So here we go. It's the only yellow we got. Add a little bit of water to it. So. It's kind of like a corn yellow or something. And it does make an interesting color, but it, it comes out more like a skin tone than an actual orange, at least as long as it's wet. Let's see how it goes when it dries. And this is kind of special because this was listed as their yellow red. And it's not even a matte orange, it is really you get a skin tone out of it, and that's probably not bad. It was just not what I bargained for. And that white is very evident when I rinse my brush because um, it's the last thing to leave the brush, so I get kind of a, a haze, a white haze when I try to. So, I'm going to make some space because I'm going to do other mixes as well. Then we got this deep red. Um, but it has more of a magenta nature to it. It looks a bit like a... Um, 
and a lizard and crimson type of color. So let's grab some yellow. And again, not that I did expect this to make a fantastic orange, but we get this uh, pastel looking skin tone type of, of color. So no bright orange this time around either. This looks much more um, orange on my camera than it does uh, in real life. That is kind of like a coral peachy pink. It's not orange. Okay, well, just for the sake of it, let's try the, the pink. And this in this one, uh, it doesn't look at all like the pink on the on the tube. It is. It looks like uh, something that comes out of a a box of. Uh, I would use this as a, <laughs> a rouge or something, makeup. And again, it just no matter how you mix this. And I tried this before. I went on camera. Um, there's no way this ever gonna look orange, but it you get these interesting shades that that looks like portrait colors. Um, so so it if if you're into portrait painting, this is a great mixing set. But I am more looking at it as in a general. Um, usage way and um, for this um, it's not the sunflower painting you're gonna do with it that's for sure and this one looks kind of like the same just darker and, um, so let's get some of the yellow and some of this and again, it, it just makes a more yellow version of, of this uh, red. It's the, the one that's called brown red. And I really tried to put a lot of, of yellow in there and it really doesn't make a difference. That yellow is kind of greenish in itself, plus it has the white in it. So, um, so that's why that that really shows through the mixes even though the the first two the reds doesn't have white in it these two does um so already we okay we can't make oranges so what else can you make with a uh, with a yellow well you can make greens now we got two greens in here and I'm gonna save these so let's try the blue and here we got this teal looking pale blue it's a little bit greenish in itself it's like a pale turquoise so i hope we can make a good green so again some yellow some of this blue and it makes a beautiful green i actually use this as a green background in a, in a painting I did a long while ago. Absolutely gorgeous mix. Very pale green. But there's also there's white in both the yellow and the blue so that is why it's, it goes so pale. Um, it's a very beautiful spring green. Very delicate. So this is one of the, the mixes where that white is actually playing a good part. It is also playing a decent part over here uh, if I didn't want a bright orange. <laughs> so the other blue here is the dark blue. And this was mostly phthalo blue in here. And maybe some... Uh, what's it called? Prussian blue. So I'm not going to use a lot of blue in here. 
And yes, this makes us another nice green. Again, it's very evident that there is white in the in the mixture. But it's a green blue, so uh, that is uh, no wonder that that makes a, a nice blue. And then there's the last one here. Uh, that is the black blue. where they have mixed in black. Um, and that is good for some things, but uh, not always. Not when the only yellow you got is full of white. You do get a green, but I was mixing these around and it doesn't take, all of a sudden it just goes gray-ish. Um, um, so, but it, it, it does work. It could be much, much worse. It was in some other mixes where that black kind of didn't work so well. So, but they all, they're all kind of muted greens. If that is what you need, then it's great. Uh, I'm not going to, to take this one because that's just a mint green that makes something that looks a version of that. And this green is also okay. Um, but none of them can stand in in this for a yellow to make an orange. So Orange is no go. <laughs> it's so funny how, how bright that looks on the camera. Uh, so let's try some other things here. We can take this blue, uh, put it over here, and then I'll take some of this red and see what happens when I mix these two. And I get that red is very dominant, but I get a funny looking, yeah, actually it goes to a skin tone. I don't think I've tried this one on on my chest. But that uh, that just makes a a purplish skin tony type of thing. So let's try again that one, but then we take this one. This makes an interesting kind of that actually makes me think of, of, of purple from from Asian and Chinese and stuff. It's kind of a plum type of color. It goes along with with this this theme about making portraits. But maybe not one I would use in this strength, but mixed in with a little bit of something else, it could definitely work as a portrait type of, of color. Uh, I'm not gonna mix it with the others there. Let's go and try this blue. That was that black blue and the yellow red here. I don't think this is gonna work because this is actually kind of it, it has a, it's like scarlet in nature, and the other one here is more green, so these two actually gives kind of a blackish color, going from black to brown to a blackish purple. difficult to show the brown because uh, it, it, it in thinning it out because it, it kind of disappears they don't mix so well these two colors there's maybe a little bit too many pigments in there 
but it could uh, in, in full strength if you do it 50 50 you can pass as a black so that's actually an okay mix um, so let's try on the other side here and you can get a little bit of the same thing here but this is a a bluish red so if I try to thin it out with some water get a like a dark version of that a plum grayish color very very pretty so uh, makes really good dark mixes that black blue there but what if I want like a, a lively purple let's try this blue here it doesn't have the black in it so And this gives us a kind of same same idea as uh, a yeah it gives a grayish blue uh, purple um, because that red really is yellowish it is an, an orangey kind of, of red but I'm not done yet more blue. And stick to my brush these things so um now this bit. and this gives more of a what you call a, a purple So now I'm trying to make the different secondaries um, you can make with this set. Um, and you don't get bright oranges, you get a, a number of purples and pinks, which is fantastic if you do paintings and, and that kind of thing. But what you can't do with this set, you can't sit down and make a, a bright floor painting, for instance. Portrait, yes, provided that you don't need a a good brown color because it, I was trying. It is really difficult to make a like an auburn brown or something. Uh, you can make kind of blacks. So hair colors in kind of the mid blonde range is a little on the difficult side. Uh, bright oranges, I said, not a no-go. Bright greens, not really an option either. Um, I'll show you the two greens there. Once I get all this white out of my brush. That is the... It's a nice uh, green, but it is kind of an olive green. And if we mix it with this uh, yellow, it it just gets you get a, a paler version of it essentially. Um, so no bright greens. Uh, now the question is how much that matters. Maybe not a lot. Um, you can get a, a decent range of greens and it's they, they actually kind of natural so if you're doing like a forest painting you can use these just hope that there's no bright colors or bright birds or bright uh, butterflies or anything in there because that you can't do you can there's one bright red and that's it everything else is kind of muted all the other reds has that uh, iron oxide in them so, so they are already on a little bit on the brownish side 
And that is also why your purples get, get kind of muted. Um, so, um, I miss a bright, a, a bright yellow in here. That, that's the essence of it. And maybe a, uh, a, a warm blue uh, leaning towards red. So this is not a fantastic uh, mixing set. Um, because you are uh, limited in your your choices uh, of of what you can do. Because uh, the one thing is there is all those white pigments in, in most of it. And the other thing is um, the yeah the lack of, of a bright yellow a warm yellow um, so um, so this it's a great set and it and uh, there's no uh, hopeless colors in here it is just that the the palette is kind of limited I th think actually it was a mixture of this blue and that red that kind of gave me a weird gray. Or yeah, it is. Even though there's a good deal of both reds and and blues in here, it's the black and the white that that actually ends up taking over. Not that that's bad. You get kind of a smoky gray out of this, but it's not super dark because of the white. So you can mix colors, you can mix interesting colors, but um, no oranges, no bright yellows. That that is like a whole chunk of the, and no bright greens because there's also uh, there's white in the yellow. So you're missing everything that that contains yellow is kind of a little funky, except if you use the the convenience colors. But that green has white in it and. This one has um, yellow ochre in it, so I'm sure we could make a painting with this. I, I haven't tried just with this yet, but um, but that's 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 why I. I it's a great uh, addition to like all the bright colors. Um, I have tried uh, these and I'm not going to do it here because the video is plenty long. But these work as a mixing set. That is brilliant because there's a sky blue and there's a cobalt blue and we got scarlet and we got permanent red. We got a actually a nice violet in here. We got a warm and a cold yellow and then we got four con convenience colors a black a gr two greens and a burnt sienna and and two tubes of white so with with the, the the starter set i could mix anything these this is more a set of convenience colors and as i said if you want to do portraits this is great because you pretty much get colors that are pre-mixed and it's just calling to to mix skin tones um they are not anywhere as bright on my paper as they are on my camera and I'm sorry about that. I hope you will just take me on my words and, and trust what I say. Uh, this blue is actually fairly fairly bright blue. But um, yeah, um, that is not a mixing set. It is a convenient set and it doesn't mean as I said, you can mix stuff, it is just a limit to what you can mix. So I hope this was uh, this was helpful. I have only had one other set of paints where I, I didn't think it was a great mixing set. And that was actually the high chroma set from Core, their watercolor. And that is also, they, they, they include some really fantastic colors in there and I wouldn't miss them for the world but I had to go and get the introduction set to get the yellows that I was missing in there um, so um, yeah happy painting turn a, 
acrylic gouache is really nice and I haven't used it anywhere as much as I should. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and all that. And I'll be back with something more. Maybe an acrylic gouache painting.